And in Nollywood, rising filmmaker Desmond Oviagele is set to bring to the big screen the strength of the human spirit and will in a new movie that chronicles some of the plight of victims of insurgency, militancy, banditry and other security challenges in part of sub-Saharan Africa, the new movie, The Milk Maid. From juvenile delinquent to detective, Following an impressive response to his debut caper movie, Render to Caesar from 2015, investment banker turned filmmaker Desmond Obiagele is back with a sophomore movie titled Milkmaid. Milkmaid follows a rural Fulani milkmaid in sub-Saharan Africa in a quest of reuniting with her sister, whom she was separated from by the activities of the local religious militants in the region. Well, I was looking for a story that addressed some of the social issues uh, in our environment, not just in Nigeria, but also in, in sub-Saharan Africa. We know that uh, for the last 10 years we've been dealing with incidences of uh, insurgency and extremism which have affected uh, several thousands across the sub region so i was looking for a story that could uh, that could capture an angle of that phenomenon that's currently going on in the uh, west african sub region in particular you know and, and the film really and the story was really inspired by the nigerian tenara note and the if you, if, if you recall the terror note, at the back of the note, you have two Fulani milkmaids. And those milkmaids, the story is actually a creative imagining of what if those girls got caught up in an extremist situation, how their lives turn out. So the two main characters of the film are actually those two girls on that note. One is called Aisha, one is called Zena, fictionally. But those are the two uh, main characters of the film. Although the story itself is not set in any particular real-life community, it mirrors the security unrest faced in sub-Saharan Africa and typically the northern part of Nigeria. Making the movie to reflect a bit of the security challenges, especially at this time when kidnapping, banditry and terrorism plague select parts of the country, requires extra research. I, I think I, I did a lot of research before I started writing the scripts because obviously I live I live in Lagos State. I'm very far removed from the people who are actually experiencing these things. So I needed to immerse myself in that world. What goes on, where do they live? You know, what are their hopes? What are their aspirations? How did this thing, this phenomenon, how does it impact them? And what are their lives after it's impacting them? So I, I read probably over 300 articles on the insurgency situation just to try and immerse myself in the situation so that when I'm writing the story, you know, I'm writing about situations and scenarios that are credible. And, you know, I mean, these, these, are, these, these are human beings, both on the victim's side and on the side of the perpetrators. You know, uh, but in many cases, there are people who are indoctrinated, they are misguided, uh, you know, and they have distorted views in terms of their beliefs. Uh, and then somewhere, you know, they get, you know, the ammunition to actually pick up, you know, um, weapons and try and enforce their own worldview, not just on themselves, but also on innocent people. And that actually is the root of, you know, what I read in my research in terms of how. Things are going on. That's what while the Nigerian female community operates chiefly from the southern part of the country, mainly in Lagos, Nigeria's southwest, Asaba in the south south, plus Uwere in the southeast, Obiagale takes his production to Taraba State in the northeast, where there have been significant records of security incidents. I mean, to be fair, we are not we are focused for the story is on the victims, yeah? And really what we're trying to show and portray in the film is the psychological and emotional impact 
of what they go through. I have issues in terms of indoctrination and all that. Of course, we have to touch on those themes in the film, but that's not our focus. Our focus really is to try and raise awareness with the film of the plights that the victims go through, both those who have been killed and those who are still alive but are languishing in various IDP camps in the country without anybody really shining a spotlight on their situation and how they can get them out of that situation. So that's really the focus of the film. The indoctrination is just part of the, you know, it's part of the context of the story, but the real story is the emotional and psychological plight of the victims of the story. The house of language based drama is about two sisters whose lives are shattered by an insurgency and gender based violence with a special focus on the understated plights of the victims, mostly women and children. Taraba State, uh, I knew as a state in Nigeria. What I didn't know was that it had such a beautiful landscape. I mean, I saw some pictures of the state on the internet. I didn't believe that was Nigeria. And someone assured me that go there for yourself and check it out. I went there to do reconnaissance. I was amazed at the wonderful, wonderful landscape. And the land, the state is richly blessed in terms of topography. And I was very convinced I needed to shoot this particular story in Tarabasi. In Vig, the states with our filmmaking equipment. Of course, we had to reach out to the government to let them know what we wanted to do, what our hopes were. And they were quite keen to support us because they knew that we were going to showcase their state with all, in all this beauty to not just a local audience but to an international audience as well. So they were quite supportive in giving us the requisite permits and all that to shoot the film. In terms of the people themselves, of course they were excited. They had never, I mean, there is a filmmaking industry there. But of course, it's on the local level. We came in with heavy, high-powered, you know, people and equipment and ammunition. Our cinematographer came down from the UK. Uh, Gaffer came from Kenya. So you know, they hadn't seen this level of production there before, and they they really took it to their hearts. They were very, very cooperative. Milkmaid will get a limited cinema release in Nigeria later this year.